Alright, this is Mr. Gilman. Today what we're going to talk about is scale drawings. Alright, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of unit rates again. We're going to review that. We're going to review something called proportions. And I know we've done some things about proportion, proportional relationships before, um, but I just want to remind you. Okay, scale drawings are a type of proportional relationship. Okay, when you're given a scale drawing problem, first you need the scale, and then you use it to find the unit rate. Um, let's review a little bit on proportional relationships. There's three different types of proportional relationships that we talked about. They were in tables, they were in equations, and they were in graphs. And uh, in the table, if the relationship was proportional, uh, we knew that the ratio from when we compare y to x was the same every time. So when I compare 3 divided by 1, 6 divided by 2, 9 divided by 3, 12 divided by 4, we notice that it always reduces to the same fraction. Okay, and so we knew it was proportional. However, that wasn't good enough. We also needed to know that it went through 0, 0. Okay, um, so we knew it was proportional. So in this case, this chart would be proportional. Um, we also looked at equations, and we decided that if the equation just looked like y equals 3x, or y equals negative 2x, or even if y equals 1 half x, it was okay. But as soon as we started adding numbers to the end of it, we decided that that equation would no longer be proportional, okay, because of this number back here. And then we also looked at um, the graph itself, okay, um, on an x and y axis, a coordinate plane. And we, had, we decided it must be 1, it must be linear, and 2 must go through the origin, or 0, 0. And in this case, this graph does, it goes through 0, 0, and it is a straight line, it has the same rate of change each time. Okay, so when you're setting up the unit rate or scale factor, uh, your unknown should be in the numerator. Okay. Uh, today what we're going to learn about is proportions a little bit. We're going to intro to proportions. So this first problem, um, we can solve it a number of different ways. Uh, let's just talk about the ways we've solved it in the past. It says a map has a scale of 2 centimeters to 75 miles. If two cities are 11 centimeters apart on the map, how far apart are they in miles? Okay, well... What we've done in the past is we found how much one centimeter equals. So if I know two centimeters equals 75 miles on my scale, then I know one centimeter would equal one half of that. So 75 divided by two, 37.5 miles. And that's what we call the unit rate. And so then this, this additional information says the two cities are 11 centimeters apart on the map. How far apart are they in miles? Well, I know if each centimeter is 37.5 miles, I want 11 centimeters total, then I can do 37.5 times 11. 37.5 times 11 to figure out how many miles there actually is. Okay? And... Uh, so, of course, we can do that. 37.5 times 11, 5, 7, 3, 0, 5, 7, 3, 5, 2, 1, 4. 41.25. 412.5. Sorry. So, I'm going to say 11 centimeters would equal 412.5 miles. And that seems like a lot of work to do, okay, with unit rates. Um, so, what I want to introduce to you is a new type of solving, and we call it a proportion, okay? And um, we know that when relationships are proportional, we looked at the graph, and we looked at the table, we looked at the equation. Um, we know these relationships, but now I'm actually going to call a proportion is where a fraction equals a fraction, okay? And so... An alternate way to solve the same problem, but probably in less steps, is to say two centimeters, we're going to make a comparison. Each fraction we call a ratio. So this part of the proportion is a ratio, 
and this part of the proportion is a ratio. But together, the whole thing makes a proportion when it's a fraction equals fraction. So when I compare um, 2 centimeters to 75 miles, um, I can also compare 11 centimeters to we don't know how many miles. We're going to call them x miles. Okay. And so now what we have here is an equation. And uh, what we've done in the past is we, we've, we've had equations with fractions in them. Or if I just put uh, 2 over 75 equals 11 over x. What we've done in the past is we've cleared fractions. Okay. So I would say, oh, well, the least common denominator between 75 and x would be 75x. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by 75x. And so the 75s cancel out, and I just have x times 2. 2x and the x's cancel out and I have 11 times 75. Uh, I think that's, let's see here, if I had to guess I would guess it is about 825 and then when I divide it by 2 on both sides I could find the number of miles, 412.5. That also seems like a lot of work to set up a proportion. So what I'm going to do instead of trying to find the clearing the fractions like we've done in the past is um, I'm just going to, what we do is cross multiply, okay? So when we have an equation that says fraction equal fraction, we call it a proportion, okay? And when it's like this in this form, we can cross multiply. Now I've heard people try to do this when they're adding fractions, multiplying fractions, those types of things, I want to cross multiply. Only appropriate to cross multiply if a fraction equals a fraction. So this is very important here. Proportions have an equals in between the fraction sign, not an addition sign, not a subtraction sign, not a multiplication sign, not a division sign. It has to be an equal sign. So instead of doing all this work like this, there's a shortcut. We can multiply 2 times x, 2x, and 75 times 11, 825. It's much quicker to solve, and now it's just a one-step equation to solve, 412.5 miles. Okay, so way back in the day we used unit rates to solve these types of problems. Okay, and so we had to figure out how much one centimeter was before we could figure out how much 11 centimeters was. And then more recently we've been solving things by clearing the fractions and uh, after I set up my equation. But today what I want to do is I want to use proportions to solve because now for these specific type of problems it's going to be the simplest and most efficient way to solve them through cross multiplication. So I just need to compare two fractions making sure that my units are the same on the top of the fractions and my units are the same on the bottom of the fractions and I'm going to cross multiply to help me solve. In this case it says the floor plan of a house is drawn using a scale three centimeters equals four and a half meters. Find the actual length of the living room if it is five centimeters on the drawing. So like I said back in the day, I just wanted to do it two different ways this time. Um, Back in the day, we had to figure out, well, okay, we know three centimeters equals four and a half meters. So if I want to know how much one centimeter is, I need to divide both sides by three. So I could figure out one centimeter equals, and then I had to do a bunch of work, four and a half divided by three, yuck. Okay, well, that's really nine halves times one third. When I change this to an improper fraction, I flip the fraction and multiply, and luckily I can cross cancel. I'm going to say that's really three halves of a meter, or I would even say one centimeter equals one and a half meters. But then I wouldn't be done yet, because even though one centimeter is one and a half meters, if I wanted to find how um, the actual length of the room is five centimeters, I would have to multiply this number by five, because I'm looking for five centimeters. It would equal one and a half meters times five. Multiply them both by five because I'm looking for five centimeters. And so this is one method that we've done in the past. So in this case, five centimeters would equal, I'm going to change this back to three halves times five over one. So five centimeters must equal 15 halves of a meter or five centimeters equals seven and a half meters. Now when we're dealing with measurement, it really is important to keep it as a mixed number. So we would never measure something in three halves or seven halves or 15 thirds. Okay, now it looks like a lot of messy work and it's just a unit rate problem that we've done in the past, but um, there's easier ways to solve these now and they're called proportions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a fraction equals fraction because we're gonna make two comparisons. Okay, the first comparison is three centimeters 
to four and a half meters. Okay, so when I'm comparing a new fraction with it, I need to make sure my centimeters are on the top and my meters are on the bottom. In this case, it says find this length of the living room if it is five centimeters on the drawing, and we don't know how many meters it is. So I'm just going to put X in there. Now, instead of clearing fractions, which is going to be a kind of a big pain in the butt, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross multiply because of this equal sign. Okay, It's called a proportion. What I have here is a proportion. The first fraction is called a ratio. The second fraction is called a ratio. But together, when they're equal to one another and we're comparing them, we call it a proportion. So when I cross multiply, 3 times X is 3X. And 4 and a half times 5, I need to do that, the math for that. So 3x equals 9 halves times 5, or 3x equals 45 halves. Now I just need to divide both sides by 3. Or, see how that's going to be nasty? Instead of dividing both sides by 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oops. I'm going to multiply both sides by one third, which is the same thing as dividing by three. The reason I can do multiply both sides by one third is that I know that my threes will cancel out and I'll left, be left just with an x, which is the whole goal of solving an equation. And then here I have a cross canceling that's going to happen. And so what I'm left with on the top is 15 times one, on the bottom, two times one. So in this case, x equals seven and a half. So as you can see, either way I do it, I get the same answer. It's just really what, which way you're comfortable with. We're going to start moving towards this way um, in the future. But for now, I guess unit rates is what we're more comfortable and more familiar with. Let's do one more here. It says, on a map, one half of a centimeter equals 65 kilometers. Okay. It says, China and New Sweden are 4.5 centimeters apart on the map. How far are they are they really? Well, before we we do any calculation, if I know that one half of a centimeter is 65 meters, then one centimeter would be twice as much. So it would equal 130 meters. Two halves would make a whole, and 265s would be 130. Okay. This information says that they're four and a half centimeters apart on the map. So if I know one centimeter is 130. Then I know if I multiply 4.5 times that 1 centimeter and 4.5 times 130, then I would know that 4.5 centimeters equals 130 times 585. Okay, so let's just make sure that um, we're going to use scale factor today, I think. We're going to use this unit rate to solve our problems. Let's see if we can finish up one more here before we are done. It says the floor plan of a house is drawn using a scale of 2 thirds inches equals 8 feet. Okay, what is the length of the basement if it's 2.5 inches long on the floor plan? Well, before I do anything, what I want to know is how much one inch is worth. So if I wanted this just to be one inch, what I would multiply it by is three halves. And to keep both sides equal, I would also multiply three halves on the other side. As you can see, what I'm left is with one inch, which is actually the unit rate. Over here, I'm left with 12 feet. So what I could say is one inch is really equal to 12 feet. In this case, it says the length of the basement is 2.5 inches long. So if 1 inch is 12 feet, then 2.5 inches would be more feet than that. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2.5 to figure out how many total inches it is. Okay, so 12 times 2.5. 0, 1, 6, 0, 4, 2, 0, 0, 3, 300. Not 300. A little decimal right there. Boom. 30. 2.5 inches would equal 30 feet. Okay. So let's solve our problems with unit rates today. And we'll do the last one in class.
That's it.